Hey guys, I imagine you all remember that I am Becca and today, as you can tell, because I'm wearing my traditional vlogging pyjamas, I am going to be doing a book diary and obviously you've read the title of this video so you know what it is. This is a book diary for Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas which is the fourth book in the core series of Throne of Glass and it is my July book for my reread of the entire series. <laughs> In this video there will be not only spoilers for the entire series but also spoilers for this book in particular so if you have not read this book or you haven't read the books that go before it and you don't want to be spoiled then please don't watch. Essentially what I remember of this book is that everything goes to shit at the end. Aelin is back on the continent, Kale's a rebel, Dorian's trapped inside his own mind, Adian's gonna die, Arabin's back, Lysandra and Caltaine are back which I'm really excited for. I think we get some of a lead in here. Manon is still killing it. And I think this is the book where all of our characters start to converge and reunite. Obviously not as much as they do in later books, but I think we start to get some of the different viewpoints intersecting, which I'm super hyped for. I'm only 38 pages into this so far. I did start it a little bit earlier today. So far, Selena's back and she's spoken to Arabin. She's just seen Kale for the first time where I'm up to, although they haven't spoken yet. Dorian's trapped, Adian wants to die, and that is all I know so far. So I want to start vlogging more. You guys want reading vlogs, I want to make them. I will be doing some sort of booktube with on vlog, although I don't know whether it's gonna be daily or a week long yet. It depends on how many of the video challenges I'm gonna participate in. But I thought we'd try out some new locations, new backgrounds, see what's going on, what we can use for future vlogs. So you're gonna see me in like a few seconds, but it's probably gonna be a longer amount of time for me because I'm gonna go play The Witcher. And we will talk more about this book. I'm over 100 pages in now, not a lot has really happened. They're about to start the rescue for Adian. I have to go to yoga in like 20 minutes, so I'm just doing a little bit for a read now. But Kale is just such an arsehole, like I can't. I used to love Kale. I didn't remember from my first reread like how terrible his character becomes, but he's not, he's not good. He's, he refuses to tell Selena about magic because he doesn't think that she should have magic and it's just not it's not the kale i know and love you know also completely irrelevant but i don't know let's see if you can see this i gouged the hole out of my finger today i can't get that to focus i don't have enough hands there we are and it really hurts oh oh it's focusing oh look at that so yeah not having a good day I'm gonna go to yoga soon and I'm not sure how much more reading I'll get done, but I'll let you know if anything else happens. One of my favourite moments so far is when Florine, the dance teacher, says that art is as vital as food to a kingdom and that wherever she sets her throne, no matter how long it takes, that she'll bring music and she will bring dancing. And I just kind of love all these threads of like support and people all coming together to well for the better and things like that and yeah I just really like that bit. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how cute Abraxas is letting a lead sleep next to him? I just I really want a wyvern guys. I really want a wyvern. So speaking of characters doing a 180 which you weren't necessarily but Kaol just gets worse with every book. Like in Crown of Midnight he was bae and then in Air of Fire he's a coward. In Queen of Shadows he's an asshole. And then Rowan's gone the opposite way, like in Air of Fire, he's like borderline abusive and like a real pain in the ass, which is the reason that I didn't like him. But then in Queen of Shadows, when he shows up, which I'm, he hasn't been around long where I'm up to, and then he's just like the nicest, sweetest, best guy. He's like um, Cassian. And it's just like, why? I'm not complaining because I, I love Rowan. I think one of the good things is in good for stories, not for how I feel about it, in Sarah J Mars's writing, is that characters are more like people in her books, so they do change and things have negative impacts on them and because her series are so long, like you see that effect, like if you think of Nesta in Akatar, Kaol was kind of like naive but very loyal and stuff and um, in Air of Fire he was faced with like a really difficult decision and he couldn't make a decision and so that 
stopped him from committing to a cause and maybe doing some damage in the process and then in Queen of Shadows he's bitter because everything he had he's lost although it's not necessarily Selena's fault or oh, should I say Aileen's fault now it's not necessarily her fault but if she wasn't around it would never have happened so it is kind of her fault and so he's bitter about that and all the stuff that he now has to do that he never thought he'd have to do and that he might lose Dorian so I think they're real people in that respect because they're just constantly changing. Things that happen to them is reflected in their character. So I do appreciate that. But yeah, a lot of her characters just do like a complete 180. Rowan just casually dropped that Lysandra is a shapeshifter. And I'm loving everyone's reactions. I thought that we only found out that she was a shapeshifter when magic was lifted. Because I wasn't sure if she knew. <laughs> it's good. I love Rowan. Because he comes in and he like has no concept of how like... I say civilised. Not civilised. But... How people from a different country live and he comes in with his like no bullshit attitude and he's just like yeah you're a shapeshifter and everyone's like say what? So I haven't updated you in a while and I've been reading quite a lot. I've read 130 pages so far just today but I don't really have too much to say you know like a lot of things I didn't remember so I'm really enjoying this because it's like I'm reading it for the first time but then I also don't have a lot to react to because I do ultimately know what is going on. But I will say that I'm enjoying the relationship between Rowan and Aelin a lot more than I did the first time around. Because when I read it the first time around, I was really bitter about Kaol. And I was kind of hoping that she'd ditch Rowan and go back to Kaol. But now I know that that's not going to happen. I can actually enjoy Rowan. So there was a bit of sexual tension that got me a bit excited. I'm so excited for Kaltain to make her move. She's like destroyed the prince inside her. I know she's just biding her time, but it has like messed with her brain a little bit. But I'm so excited for that. Lysandra's been kidnapped and I can't wait for them to get her back. Because, oh god, I just, I'm, I'm dying for these like badass Lysandra moments. A lot of them have already come, but there are like so many more to arrive and I'm loving how the plot is all coming together and they found the tomb in the catacombs and like have revealed secrets about Erowyn and they know who Erowyn is now. Selena is about to meet Manon and I'm living for that because those two are like my ultimate queens and it's all just a very exciting reading experience so far. So I'm up to the bit where they are just literally about to meet. It's the meeting between the king, the witches and Selena's gone to get Lysandra back. It's a lot. I love this book so much. I am flying through this. I have less than 200 pages left. So I'm not going to finish it tonight. I don't think I can read 200 pages in one night. And I'm going to Flamingo Land tomorrow. But I'm hopefully going to have it finished before the end of the weekend. And I'm just like loving this story so much. Which is... I kind of should have expected it because this is the point where the series really picked up for me the first time around. So I should have expected it. But I've kind of just been like trudging through Sarah J Mass books because the beginning of the Throne of Glass series with the exception of Assassin's Blade is definitely my least favourite work by Sarah J Maas apart from A Court of Frost and Starlight but yeah you can tell you can see her growing as a writer as we go along through her work and I think Queen of Shadows was released the same year of A Court of Thorns and Roses so she was really like picking up her game then I'm excited to continue and I will fill you in when I've got something else to say trying to read but Princess wants love. Can you, darling? Class. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, Rowan just exchanged the ring for the fake amulet. And I feel like it takes him a really long time to figure out that it's fake. And he's, um, yeah, he's way away from, from everything by the time he does finally figure that out. So points to them. Kind of feel bad for him though, because he swore an oath and Rowan was like, an oath is the only currency that he swears by. And yet they're deceiving him. And I do kind of like Lorcan. I like morally grey characters. They make me happy. I've been to Flamingo Land today, which is a theme park and zoo, so I haven't done a lot of reading. It's like 10 pages, but I'm, I'm probably not going to finish this tonight. I would have done if I hadn't have gone out, but I had a great time, so I'm not going to be like mad about it, but I'll just, I'll just see how far I get on. Nezrin and Kaol are so cute. I didn't even remember that they were a thing. I thought that only happened maybe in Tower of Dawn completely forgot about it but oh i'm glad that kale gets to be happy again because he deserves it rowan and aelin 
are also killing me. So much sexual tension. Ugh. Selena just got Manon's- why do I keep calling her Selena? Aelin just got Manon's message that the human is still inside Dorian. So now they're not going to kill him. I have no idea how this resolves. I know that at the end of this book is when they blow the tower up and then the witches come in on their wivens and start causing havoc at the same time that everyone else is causing havoc and then Dorian isn't enslaved to a Valg prince. But I don't remember how because it's not been done before but they know, they now know that Dorian can be saved. Completely forgot about Ress and Brolo and I'm kind of sad because Ress has been around since the beginning days like Brolo I don't remember as much or I care about as much but Ress was always cute and now he's dead. Completely forgot that Kale tries to sacrifice himself. Also, I'm sorry for how I look right now. I got out of bed not long ago and I'm like kind of gunky. So yeah, like Kale sacrificed himself to buy Aileen some time. And I don't remember this and I don't remember what happens next. Okay, so I'm going to let my nerd out right now. The bit where Rowan, Adian and Lorcan are stuck in the sewers and they kill the word hounds and then the ceiling all comes down as the wildfire. Wildfire? is set off and then there's like hundreds of Val commanders there that they need to kill really reminds me and i'm gonna try not to spoil anything here but the last ever episode of angel you have i think four characters I don't, it's been a while since i watched angel i don't like it as much as buffy and they've just like suffered a great battle or whatever and they're about to head into this like massive battle with thousands of other creatures and they're all like bedraggled from already fighting and they're like just stood there and then it goes off. Really reminds me of that and I'm like nerding out over it. Lysandra's come to save the boys. Ah, God, I love Lysandra so much. She's like one of my favourite characters. My favourite characters in Throne of Glass are Lysandra, Manon, and, oh god, I love Caltan so much. Dun dun dun! Perrington is the big bad and Erwin is free. I already knew that. Like, I, I remembered that one. <laughs> it didn't come as a surprise. <sighs> the king. The king gets me in the feels a little bit. The poor king. Caltan's sacrifice is, without a doubt, one of the most epic moments in the entire Throne of Glass series. And I love it so much. I'm sad that she's only like a short part of the story but just the fact that such a minor character was like wrapped up and played such a huge part in the plot and just oh god when she burns it to the ground it just makes me so happy. So I've just finished Queen of Shadows and it is my favourite one that I've reread so far probably followed by Assassin's Blade and then I don't really know about the other three. The other three are like my least favourite in the series. The first one's probably like the worst one for me. But this one was so action packed. Love Manon. A character I'm not too bothered about is the lead. Like I just don't I don't care for her. I've never really gelled with her. Love Rowan and Adrian. Lysandra, one of my favourites. Abraxas. Can I have him? Like, can I have him? The plots definitely start to thicken around this point and they just get more and more action packed and intricate as you go along. This is my new hippo friend. Not that that's relevant. Five stars, obviously, no surprise there. In hindsight, I probably should have given like Air of Fire, like four stars, but what are you going to do? I still really love Sarah J Maas. Just some of her books are better than others, but I don't really feel like they necessarily need ranking down. But yeah, you all knew that I was going to love this. Favourite instalment in the series so far. Action packed, epic, love the character developments, love all the battle scenes and pretty much everything about this book. I read it really quickly for a Sarah J Maas book, although I think I started it on movie Wednesday. I don't remember and it's no Sunday, but really quickly I read it in pretty much four sittings and I'm kind of excited for Empire of Storms the biggest book in the series so far I'm not really sure how big Tower of Dawn is because that's not the one that I haven't read yet but it's like 700 pages Empire of Storms and I'm reading it in a readathon so that should be fun but I'm excited to get to that when I do and I will see you guys in my next book diary as usual like comment if you have anything to say about this book on this book diary and like and subscribe and all that jazz and i will see you in my next book diary bye